Hi and welcome back to Yoga Berry. My name is Christine Jaregi Berry. I specialize in teaching yoga for scoliosis. And in this video today, I've got five tips for your yoga practice if you are suffering from scoliosis. So let's get right into it straight away with tip number one. So number one for me is become your own health expert. So you want to find out as much as possible about your scoliosis, which includes getting an x-ray done, getting a formal diagnosis from a doctor as well. Get as much information as possible. If there's anything that they would suggest that you do or don't do, um, we don't judge straight away what they say or, or think about if it's right or wrong. Just take it all down. Take lots and lots of notes. Um, do a little bit of research, of course, if, you, if you've got the time to find out a little bit more about scoliosis. But really, it's any, any um, information that you can collect will be so valuable. And, and I always have my students draw their scoliosis curvature as well because it's really really helpful just to visualize what your spine looks like and what effect this might have on the rest of the body so all the muscles along the spine the the organs the the whole system and how the body tries to compensate obviously in space when there's a curvature somewhere along the spine and becoming your own health expert is really going to help you in your yoga practice once you start adjusting the, the practice just for you, just for your curvature, rather than going with the general yoga poses, you will really, really benefit from this. Tip number two would have to be find a qualified yoga teacher that can help you with your scoliosis. There's plenty of yoga teachers out there in the world. Um, find someone who's got some experience with working with scoliosis. It's not very straightforward because in yoga we always try to, to balance. We do one side exactly the same length as, as the other side. We're always trying to be overall balanced. So, so if we're starting with an imbalance, you will want to try and find someone who's got a little bit of experience with this. Number three is start to get practicing at home. So it's always great to go to a group yoga class um, but just bearing in mind that this is it's it's very very general it's kept very general for everyone so everyone can get something out of the class if you want to start really create a very beneficial practice for your body you'll need to start practicing at home and really a little bit every day goes a long way so even 10 minutes every single day will make such a big difference to you and Keep it very simple. Maybe pick three poses that you have learned either from my YouTube channel. Um, pick three that you might have um, found to be beneficial in your group yoga class. Or maybe you've been practicing with a, a qualified teacher on a one-to-one -one basis and they have designed a program for you, which is obviously the, the, the best way to, to practice. But otherwise, keep it very simple. Practice three poses to begin with and then you can slowly start to build it up and then we try to mix it up a little bit so we don't start to get other um, imbalances in the body obviously so we always want to keep it a little bit varied but start with three poses and then get really really good at them and then you can start to expand from there. So tip number four from me is get some yoga props and I'm not getting paid to, to tell you to buy some expensive props, definitely not. Um, there's no need to spend loads and loads of money on your yoga, but some yoga props can be really, really useful. One of my favorites, usually the first thing I recommend is a yoga bolster. There's a lot of things that we can practice, a lot of restorative yoga poses that we practice with a yoga bolster. Um, I use bricks very much. So these are my yoga bricks. They look like this um, blocks and yoga belts. One of these um, kind of D-ring belts. Very, very useful for your practice. 
I use blankets a lot, so hopefully everyone's got some blankets, some cushions are really, really great. And then I use these cork um, wedges as well. So this is becoming a little bit more specific. So not one of the first things you might want to buy, but very, very good to um, adjust your, your supine, your lying down poses and seated positions as well. Tip number five is always, always monitor yourself. So you want to monitor yourself during the practice. How does your body respond? You want to monitor yourself after the practice. How does your body feel right after your practice? And how does it feel the next day? So if you're feeling really, really achy the next day, obviously the, the muscles will have done some work, but always ask yourself if, if it's maybe been a little bit too much. So always making sure we never want to um, experience pain in, in yoga. So if there is pain, there's definitely no gain. So get out of the pose, modify it, do something different. Um, we always want to really work in the, in the comfort zone. And some things might feel uncomfortable to begin with. And we're trying to distinguish between pain um, which is sharp, which is localized one point somewhere in the back where you can point your finger. Um, that is pain. If it's a larger area, then, then that might be muscle tension um, and that can slowly be dealt with and that can be released. But definitely monitor yourself. Write it down what you experience. And again, we're coming back to point number one. Become your own health expert so taking that responsibility for your body for your practice you know your body best you really really need to get into it as much as possible you're the one living in it in it at the end of the day so it's in your best interest that it's strong that it's healthy and that you're feeling happy in your body so once you've become a little bit more confident with your own, with your home practice, you're monitoring yourself, you know more or less what you're doing, you will find enormous benefits um, with your yoga practice. You will find that you're starting to trust your body again. And this has been a huge learning curve for me over the last years, as long as, as far as I can remember. Um, really because I was diagnosed when I was five years old so I've kind of grown up with the with the condition always had to do something about it in my own body and it's only once I started to become a little bit more serious about my yoga practice that I really started to trust my body again that I started to work with my scoliosis accepting it not trying to change it but really feeling as comfortable as possible in in my own body feeling as strong as possible and just enjoy living in your body so i really hope that you found this useful feel free to join my yoga for scoliosis community over on facebook really really great place to meet other people who are going through the same thing other people who um, are happy to answer your questions as well we motivate we inspire each other so we would love to have you in that community if you like this video please leave me some comments let me know if you've got anything to add to that list let me know if you've got any questions and give me a thumbs up that always really, really helps me obviously to, to just get the, the videos out there and for lots of people to see them and join our community. So that's it from me today and I see you very soon for the next video.